Now, this is one of those videos where I want to talk to you about something that feels like a good investment to myself, but at the same time, I have conflicting ideas inside of my head. And it has everything to do with the new Canon EOS R5C. Now, you might have seen this video where I recently talked about just switching from the ATM Mini to the ATM Mini Pro ISO for the creation of these videos because that makes my day-to-day -day life that much easier to have all of the ISO recordings. And that video will be linked up here. But using this type of a workaround with the ATM Mini Pro ISO basically was necessary because I have cameras which currently have a 30 minute record time limit. Now, there's no way to get rid of this record time limit inside of the camera unless Canon at some point were to decide that they are going to publish a firmware release which would change that. However, that's probably not going to happen. What they are doing, slowly but surely, is releasing cameras which don't have those limitations anymore. One of those cameras is the Canon EOS R3, which is an insanely big camera and especially it is a camera that is insanely expensive. However, they always had the cinema line of cameras and there you don't have that 30 minute record time limit because those cameras are dedicated video devices. And with that, they now also released the Canon EOS R5C, which is based on the R5. So it has a lot of those functionalities and features and of course also the specs, but it merges with the cinema lineup. Now, this is magic for me because when the R5 came out, I was like, that is on paper, it's an incredible camera. It has 4K up to 60 frames per second, I think even up to 120 frames per second in slow motion mode. And you also can, if you want to, shoot 8K and have photos with up to 45 megapixels, which is absolute insanity and would be just a dream to own. However, that camera, of course, as you may know, was plagued with overheating and, of course, still the 30-minute record time limit. And the 30-minute record time limit was, at the time, one of the main reasons why that camera was not actually as interesting to me as it might have been if they would not have put that limit into that camera. So I thought I'm going to stick with the current setup, the Canon EOS R, until further notice. And now that might be the moment which is that notice. Now the use cases that I have for my equipment are especially in the studio, like I am currently using them here, but I also do on location shoots and I want to be able to travel with my equipment. So lightness of the equipment is a big, big component. However, I also don't want to switch gear. So I don't want to switch to a different manufacturer, like for example, Sony, Nikon, or anything like that. I quite like the Canon ecosystem. I quite like the lenses that I have, and I don't want to switch again because I've done that in the past. So I was in this position where I was just waiting for Canon to finally catch up and I think I might have found my answer. Now I've said this before and I want to reiterate this again. What I would like to do with this channel over the next few months and potentially years is step up the quality every so slightly whenever possible. One of those steps would be to start completely doing everything in 4K. However, that of course is kind of also based on other aspects and not just the camera. And I've said this before in other videos if you just get our camera that can shoot 4K, but you have a grandpa computer that's really old, then you might run into issues because you will have to either create proxies, which will take forever, or you will have to work with what you've got and use your com computer with the limitations that you might experience during the editing process. And the same thing also applies to storage of all of those files. Now, right now, I feel like I am in a position where I can easily do the upgrade to 4K with the new MacBook M1 Max that I have since about November last year when they released those. So that is already kind of like lying the groundwork for me to eventually be in a position to be able to then step up my game to a complete and fully specced out 4K workflow. However, the cameras that I am using here right now have a horrendous crop of almost 1.8x if I am using them in 4K, which may be something I can work with if it's the B camera, so maybe the second angle, but not if it's my main camera, which I want to use for every shot and especially 
also use the full range of the lens that I have. For example, the 15 to 35 or something like that. I want to have the ability to go into that wide angle and not be limited by a stupid crop, which is 1.8 times. A Super 35 crop or a Super 16 crop for artistic purposes or for the purpose of zooming into the picture essentially, that might be an interesting thing. Even using Super 35 lenses with a EF to RF adapter and stuff like that, those, all of those things might make sense, but with full frame lenses and all of the lenses that I have now in the RF lineup are full frame lenses, I want to be able to use that whole image sensor and basically get the best quality that I can get. So as I mentioned, the EOS R for 4K work, it is doable, but it's absolutely not what I would want to use every single day. But then of course we also have the 30 minute record time limit, which again, I can work around, for example, by using a Atomos Ninja V, putting it onto the camera and shooting that way. But interestingly enough, Canon now has this camera, the R5C, and as I look, here on the website with the specs, those are absolutely incredible. Especially if I scroll down here and just for the technical overview with a 8K full frame sensor, but also the oversampled 4K, at least that's the naming that I think it will have. HDR possible, C-Log up to C-Log 3. You have all the cinema functions, but you also have cinema raw light if you wanna shoot that. You can shoot up to 60 frames per second in 8K, which is absolute bonkers and completely insanity. And I'm looking forward to trying that out. And taking 45 megapixel stills is still part of this camera because I'm used to about 30 megapixels from the Canon EOS R and I wouldn't necessarily have to upgrade to more megapixels per se, but taking more, I will always do that. Now, some of you might wonder, why not take a look at the C70 for this purpose because it has no 30 minute record time limit and it also can do a lot of those other things which I am looking for in terms of full frame or full sensor 4K and more. However, the C70 is a much bigger body. It is much heavier than for example, the EOS R and it also is much heavier than the EOS R5. And with that, it kind of puts itself onto the sidelines for my consideration because I wanna be able to put these things into a backpack and pretty much use them as I have always done with DSLRs previously, like the 5D Mark II, and now with the Canon EOS R or the Sonys that I had in between. So I want that form factor of a small mirrorless camera that I can use easily on travels. I want to be able to take photos and incredible video, and that just may be the perfect combination which the R5C will bring to the table. Now, of course, you probably have seen the images that Canon has published. And of course, it has that hunk on the back. So it has the huge, basically the air vent and the ventilator or the uh, fan in the back of the camera. And all of those things will be something that is going to be interesting to see how that camera feels in my hands. But at the same time, looking at the specs, I found out that it's going to be just about 100 grams more than the Canon EOS R when you don't have any battery or SD card or CF Express card inside of the camera. So in terms of weight, it's not that much of a difference. Now, some things that I am really looking forward to in this camera is of course, testing out the 8K 60 frames per second and also the 4K 120 frames per second for those cinematic travel shots when we are back in Spain, for example, to do some filming that way. But especially, I am also very much looking forward to the oversampled 4K, even just the 24 frames or 30 frames per second for standard YouTube filmmaking, filming the yoga sessions with Nicole, filming my own YouTube videos, filming interviews and stuff like that that might be coming up in the coming months. All of those things will be possible in the Canon EOS R5C, which right now I would either have to have external recording solutions like the Atomos Ninja V on my EOS R bodies, or I really have to be careful and just make sure that I don't miss that ending of that 30 minutes so that I can hit the record button again or have someone else hit that record button again. However, I'm looking forward to much more, like for example, having more dynamic range to begin with, with C-Log3, and also having the opportunity to film in cinema raw light or any kind of raw format for video, because I've never had that opportunity yet. 
I know raw photographs and that's really good and I never really shoot anything else, but I've never really experienced raw as a video format. So that's going to be incredibly interesting to learn about and try to understand as well. One thing that I, for example, just recently learned there and it makes total technical sense is that if you want to shoot RAW, you basically just have the option to either take the whole sensor, so you film 8K, so that's a full frame sensor readout and you shoot that at RAW. But if you want to have less resolution and in most other cases that's done by oversampling or line skipping or stuff like that, if you want to have res less resolution in RAW, you are always going to have a crop. So with this camera specifically, the R5C, you can get a full sensor readout, so for full frame, but then you can also get Super 35, which is a crop of about 1.43 or something like that. And then you can also get Super 16, which is about full HD in terms of its quality, and that is RAW, but of course it is a massive, massive crop, or rather a zoom into the image, because of that readout mechanism. So that's something that I just recently read about on the specs page and that was even just an interesting learning and maybe a bit of a bummer that you can't get raw in 4K but not or have still the full sensor readout but technically speaking it absolutely makes sense that this is the case. Another really cool thing is that this camera actually has a dedicated timecode port. So if we look at this here you can see this port at the top here and that actually makes it possible so that you can send in the timecode via, for example, the Tentacle Sync E or other devices and the camera will be able to process that into metadata and so you don't lose the audio signal which you can record with the microphone but you still have accurate timecode information. So that's also one of those things where I think for a video creator and I consider myself a more video creator than a photographer, that's a huge step into a direction which I find absolutely interesting and will make my work that much more easy. Now, of course, there are certain things with this camera that are kind of a downer, like for example, that they chose the micro HDMI port over the mini or a full-sized HDMI port, even though I would consider that there is space for a mini HDMI port. And I'm quite happy with the mini HDMI port I have on the Canon EOS R. But I also think that with the clamp that I use with the EOS R, that the micro also will hold up quite nicely. You just have to be a bit more careful about that. The other thing that people are talking about with this camera in terms of its downsides is that they actually removed the IBIS, which the R5 had, and now the R5C does not have the image stabilization sensor. It still has the electronic stabilization like the Canon EOS R even has, and it will also still work together with the RF glass that has stabilization built in, but you don't have the sensor shifting around. Now, from the videos that I have seen talk about this type of effect and also the videos that are comparing the stabilization inside of the EOS R5C and the stabilization of the R5 with the image shifting sensor, I think that this might actually not be that big of a deal. And I totally agree, or at least as of right now, I can agree to a certain extent with the stance that Canon is taking on this, which is that for video making, the image sensor actually is better when it is locked off in that position. Now, would I prefer a solution where you can lock that sensor in the stabilization mechanism with a setting and then also have image stabilization on the sensor shift basis with the IBIS and use that, for example, in photo mode or have the option to use it in video mode? Sure, that would be nice, but that's not a good enough reason for me to not look into this camera because there are so many more things that I find really intriguing that are making or going to make my life that much more easy. Now, a big deterrent in this whole situation, however, is the price. This camera is an incredibly expensive camera and it is for sure the most expensive camera that I have ever looked at in terms of realistically buying. This here costs in Germany about 4,999 euros and that is with tax included. Now that's a huge jump up. The Canon EOS R that I am using here, those cost me around 1,700 to 1,900 when I purchased them. So that's a huge jump going all the way up to almost 5,000 euros. But 
this camera is also a completely different ball game. And if I look at the specs of this camera and try to find even other cameras by other manufacturers, it is reasonably priced in the same ballpark. And that is something that to me made this also a decision that I think makes sense. I also think that this is a business decision. It is a decision to invest into the YouTube business that I'm running here, the creations that I want to be able to make, the way that I work in my workflow and all of those things. But you might have also noticed that this will also mean that I will have to change my workflow because I'm not going to continue filming with the ATM Mini Pro ISO because that only supports 1080p capture. I will probably change to a in-camera workflow and there I will have to hit the individual buttons of the cameras. And then you might ask yourself, how am I going to film with two cameras if I only am going to get one? Because seriously, YouTube is not paying me enough money right now that I could afford two of these cameras. So the main idea that I have about that right now is to basically have one camera that is the R5C and I'm going to keep one of the EOS R cameras and I will put the Atomos Ninja V on top of that second camera and then that way I basically have unlimited recording on that second body as well. Now I have alluded to this, this is a expensive camera and this will mean that I have a lot of work to do to be able to afford this camera. And I will also be selling a lot of other stuff that I have here in my kit in my room of things that I might not be using anymore. And I will continue that selling after this camera arrives and I will have made certain videos about it because of course it is going to be helpful to have two camera angles, even filming the process of things like the unboxing process of a camera like this. And of course also filming the settings or the setup process and of course also testing this camera and having b-roll material ready to go. So I'm still going to keep my set here in a functioning state to this point, but I'm going to sell a lot of other things that I have not been using a lot. For example, things like the ATM mini that I had here before. I'm also going to sell a bunch of microphones that I am not regularly using. So those are going to go up on eBay. I even considered if I wanna get rid of the Zoom F6 and the Octava that I am using here in the studio, but for now I decided against that. Overall, you might notice I am going to go for a stretch here, but I also have seen others here on YouTube make similar decisions and I think that this is something that you have to do as a business. I have to invest into the business to be able to grow with it and also be able to just grow as a person being able to be in this space better. Now I totally see that this is not necessary to start a YouTube channel and it is absolutely possible to start with a GoPro or even a smartphone. And for example, Nicole, when she was doing her yoga channel or starting that yoga channel, she literally started with her smartphone, even editing the videos on that phone. But for me, I think this is maybe a nerdy kind of thing. I really want to push the technology and I also want to push myself to be able to grow with this process and give you a higher quality of a production value and give me more fun, enjoyment and an overall interesting experience to basically wrap around all of this. Now again, this is going to be a stretch for me. This is going to be an interesting phase for me because I will have to see how I can make this work but it also feels like that is a kick into my butt basically. It, it lights a fire for me or inside of me to be able to create more and push more for those kind of things. This camera gives me the feeling that this is actually a serious business. This is not just me here in my YouTube studio. This is work that I am doing. I'm doing it with professional equipment. And when I go out, film an interview for someone else, or film an interview for this channel even itself, then this type of equipment definitely helps in terms of the outside perspective, but also in terms of the workflow that I can do with it. Now, this might've been a bit of a rant about why I pre-ordered the Canon EOS R5C even days after upgrading to the ATM Mini Pro ISO, which already is a improvement in the ease of the workflow that I am doing here. But this is not just a upgrade in ease of how I can use things, this is a upgrade in quality that I can produce. I already have a list of ideas about the R5C and things that I want to be covering here on the channel because I think that this is a special camera for YouTube creators like myself 
and you might be interested in that as well. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave those in the comment section down below and I will try to make sure to also include those types of things into the creation of those videos that are going to follow. And until then, I'm going to hunker down, I'm going to sell some stuff, I'm going to make this work because this is probably the most interesting camera that I have ever seen released. And with all that said, I hope this was interesting or in some kind of inspiring to you. I'm definitely looking forward to connecting with you in the comment section. I'm definitely looking forward to this camera, which will take about another eight weeks to arrive because that's when the pre-release orders will be fulfilled. And until then, I hope you have an amazing day, create your videos, make something happen, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.